Welcome to the sixth, le sixth lecture in AC1002. This lecture will look at structural principles. So when we're talking about structural principles, we're, we're really talking about um, a kind of basic understanding of how structures um, react to, to loads and forces and how the individual components of those structures help the, the, the structure of the building, building deal with loads upon it. The, the following slides describe the, the principles that hopefully will help you understand that. And then there are lectures which will follow on from, from this one, which will help you see how these principles are incorporated into the, the design of a building. Um, one note that, that because this is an introductory module, there are some aspects of this which uh, have been simplified. Uh, other aspects which a structural engineer would, would consider have been omitted. Um, so this isn't the whole picture, but it should give you hopefully enough to, to understand how structures are designed and um, the, the processes that need to be understood or the principles that need to be understood. So what do we need to think about first? What do we need to understand in order to understand how buildings are designed? Um, the first point is that buildings are subjected to, to loads um, and these loads have to be considered while designing the, the structure. And not only the whole structure, which works as a system, but how individual components deal with the, the loads is important. So to understand the role of structure, we need to understand loads. And you've probably all heard the, the phrase action and reaction, or every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And this is true for uh, structures as well. And for a weight sitting onto a, a bridge, as we've got here, the, the, the load of those bricks will pass into the structure of the bridge, which will then be passed into the ground at either side. And that is the, the, the kind of first action. The, the reaction um, is the support reaction at either end, where it touches the ground, where effectively the ground is pushing back up into the, the, the building or the bridge. And it's important to, to think about this um, from the point of view of keeping a building in equilibrium. If the building isn't in equilibrium and those two reactions don't match, then the building will either sink into the ground or um, the ground will push up in a greater way and the building will, will, will heave upwards. So all reactions should be equal um, in order to, to keep the building stable and on the ground. So when we talk about loads, what are we, what are we talking about? Um, we can categorise them in a number of ways. The first category that we can think of are dead loads. So these are loads which are always present within the building. Um, it could be the weight of a roof, the materials on the roof, uh, timbers to make it up, insulation. It could be floors, internal partitions, walls, but it could also be any fixed furniture or things that are always going to be present within the building but maybe don't form part of the construction. The flip side of of these loads is that you can look at live loads and these are things which are not always present in the building and probably aren't fixed to the building. So this might be furniture, beds, sofas, people moving around, cats, dogs, uh, snow on the roof, anything that can reasonably be planned for but isn't always part of the building. And a structural engineer, if he was designing a floor, would probably consider the use of the room um, and would therefore be able to make some assumptions 
on the occupancy, which would then give him an idea about the, the live loads which are likely. And he would be designing a structure for the maximum live loads that would happen within, within the building. But dead loads and live loads tend to work vertically um, within a building, and they're passing all their loads down to the foundation. But we also have to contest with, uh, with wind in, in Scotland and most places around the, around the world. And wind tends to act in a sideways fashion on buildings. So we would refer to this as a, a lateral load. And we would have to deal um, or design with uh, design windows, doors, walls, fences, all things which, which could possibly be um, subjected to a lateral or sideways load would have to be designed to, to withstand that. And there are other loads that can happen to buildings. We, we're, there's things that we can't possibly plan for, such as uh, impact or explosions. Um, and we wouldn't ask you to understand this, and it is a very difficult um, thing to design for. But on larger buildings, they would probably consider the, the, the potential for, for impact. Um, on smaller domestic scale buildings, I know that from projects that I've done, the structural engineers have considered uh, impact when they're dealing with the construction of garages. Um, you wouldn't believe how many people have told me that they have driven through the back of their garage at some point or hit the post that supports the, the door. And you wouldn't want the building to, to, to collapse through, through a small impact. So the structural engineer would consider that as part of his design. So when we have a load placed onto a, a, a building, we have to consider what the effect of that might be. And if we took a, a simple frame structure um, and we placed a, a load on top of it, or we to, to, to replicate a dead load or a live load, or we pushed it from the side to replicate a lateral load, the likely way that this would deform would be to kind of shift sideways. And we would refer to this as racking. So if we think about racking as the tendency for a frame structural to deform under those loads, the deformation would be to make something that is square or rectangular into a parallelogram. So it's, it's pushing it out of shape, it's deforming it. And what tends to happen if this is unbraced, the connections at each of the corners and the connection into the ground would, the, the members would rotate relative to each other. So they'd no longer be at 90 degrees. Some of them would form obtuse angles and some of them would form acute angles through a rotation of that, uh, that joint. So how do we stop that? We need to find some way of stiffening the frame. Um, one method which is often used is to infill a frame with a solid wall. The frame itself is the structural element, but the solid wall acts to resist the, um, the members moving, so it prevents racking. We could also um, act in a much lighter way and use diagonal bracing which would run from corner to corner and that means that when you push the, the, the frame or, or try to uh, deform it the elements running from one corner to the other um, would act in tension where they, were, where they were going to get longer and if you look back over the two slides ago there is, you know, those diagonal lines would get longer so we'd be looking for something to, to, to resist um, that uh, action of kind of pulling those corners apart. And another common method is to try and resist the, the, the rotational aspect of those corners by providing a, a very rigid connection or a rigid joint. So if in a, a steel frame this might be a, a welded bracket um, or it could be a, a kind of heavily bolted um, makeup with a face plate onto it. Um, 
if this is a timber frame it, it could be small corner brackets um, slightly more difficult to make a, a, a rigid timber frame but this would work and that would give you a nice open space without the need for, for, for bracing so you might use a situation or you might use um, rigid joints in a situation where you need large windows or large openings So I mentioned tension when we were talking about the, the cross bracing wires and tension is the, the action of, of, of pulling, it's a force that, that acts to pull elements apart so we're trying to kind of lengthen elements so in this slide here we've got a hook which is stationary and a cable um, which then connects down to a weight and the, 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 the force acting on that cable um, is acting to try and make the cable longer now, if the cable is, is strong enough, then it will um, it will not deform, it will stay it will stay the same shape and it won't snap. However, if the cable or other structural element isn't very strong in tension, um, then it can fail either by stretching or by snapping. And as you go through this module and others, you'll discover that there are some materials which are which are very good in tension uh, and some materials which, which are not so good in tension. And we tend to use um, steel, steel cables um, for, for most aspects of buildings which, which need to, to work in tension. The opposite of tension is compression. So this is when a load placed on, on a particular element will act to shorten it. So the weight of the, the bricks sitting on the column here or the wall will, will push it down. So the material becomes compressed. And likewise, if we don't design the column or the wall with a, you know, in a, in a kind of correct way, we can cause deformation. So if the wall or column is too slender, it would probably deform under the weight or under the load um, in such a way that would cause it to bend outwards and buckle and, and eventually snap and fail. So that bending, um, we can think about uh, a simple beam when we try and kind of understand how things bend and the forces that are acting upon that. So if we think about a simple beam, and we, we, we drop a hold of bricks onto it, um, the building, the, the beam is going to be under load. The two triangles at either end are just a representation of a support. So what happens to, to that beam when we put weight on it? It would bend. So under load, the beam bends. The top part of the beam would effectively get shorter and the bottom part would get longer. Um, if you think about the corner on a running track, the inside track, the, the bit nearest the inside of the field, is a shorter distance than the outside of the track. And it's no dis different from, from this, um, from what happens to a beam under load. So the top of the beam is, is kind of getting squeezed in and it becomes slightly shorter. Um, the bottom of the beam, because it's getting longer, gets pulled apart. So bending of a beam like this is a combination of compression and tension. And there is a point in the middle of the beam which doesn't change length. And we would refer to that line as the, the neutral axis. Um, at some point in your university career, you'll probably have to do some calculations. So an understanding of how a beam works with compression and tension in the neutral axis will come into play later on. We also have to think about how the loads are distributed on a, on a beam or within a structural system. If we have a, a primary beam, like in the last example, resting between the two triangular things, and we put uh, other beams to sit on top of them, the loads carried by those other beams would, would would hit that main beam at a point. So we'd refer to those as point loads. If we were, however, to rest a concrete slab on the beam, 
the, the, the weight or the load of that concrete slab would be evenly distributed across the beam. So we'd refer to that as a uniformly distributed load or a UDL. So with those principles in mind, in the following lectures we're going to start to talk about how those principles um, get amalgamated into the design of a building. So we'd be looking at how to frame a building, what the component parts of the building might be with, with regard to structure, um, what we would use foundations for uh, and what do they do, and how we would make sure that the loads within the building are transferred effectively to the foundation. So that would be the load path. And we'd be looking at how the, the, the parts of the building deal with the various loads within the building. So in conclusion, knowledge of the principles of structural engineering, um, even at a very basic level, can help you understand the types of loads within a building, how those loads might affect beams and columns, and how you can design out potential failure of those elements. Um, how the structural frame or those elements might deform and the reason why you might need to uh, brace a structure or um, have rigid joints to stop frames de deforming.